Hello and welcome to A Game Played on Grass, our new show brought to you by the Sports Battle Group or Sports Battle Media. We haven't really decided on what we're going to call the actual company of it yet, but I'm sure you've seen we've changed the name and we've changed the show's name. Uh, there will be three of us, don't worry, Jake, the Prince of Rome, will be, be back. back. Uh, the Prince of Hale will be back, he's just off this week. I think he's, is he refereeing tonight? He's right? refereeing. He's refereeing. But as you know, the, the Premier League season started back. At the weekend, um, two happy boys here, obviously. Our, both our teams got so got a win. Manchester United won, Man City won. Not so good for Arsenal. Um, the promoted teams had an up and down yeah. uh, weekend, but uh, buzzing to have it back after a really good World Cup. Fantastic World Cup, and we didn't have that long to wait. Yeah, three um, weeks or something, man, it was. It was so short, but brilliant. Like, you can't complain about it. Like, no, it was, fantastic. It, was a brilliant, it was a really thoroughly enjoyable World Cup. Mm -hmm. One of my favourite ones so far. Like, um, but we've already done a lot on that, so we're not get a bit bogged down that there, we'll never stop them. No. Um, yeah, there was loads that happened at the weekend, as I've said, some of the teams have won. Um, where do you want to start? Because like, everyone's been talking about who's going to win it already. We're not going to do predictions just yet. We want Jake back in to give his opinion. He'll say Arsenal win the league anyway, but... Of course you um, Was there anyone, just to start us off with, not even team, but even player, that impressed you over the weekend? Or was there anyone in particular... Um, obviously you have your standard, like your your city and your Liverpool, um, and Liverpool's additions uh, really impressed me. Nami Keita, um, I know you want to say it yourself, um, but he looks like he's just fit in straight away. Um, it, it adds like a strength and depth to Liverpool, um, which we maybe didn't see oh, yeah. last year. Um, you know, if you're going to win a league, which is going to be Liverpool's time, is going to be this season, if any, I think. It's the strongest um, squad they've had in the Premier League history, I think. Um, maybe you'll have a different squad, I don't know. But um, from the from the word go, they look like they're going to be real challengers. And the additions of Keita um, and Shakira even coming on, um, you saw what he can add off the bench. It's going to be pace, it's going to be goals, I would think, with the quality of players he's playing right now. Um, it's uh, it's going to make a real difference to their to their entire squad. Yeah, I think I would agree with you probably that it's the strongest squad that I've certainly seen Liverpool have uh, in the Premier League. Barney Man has only born 88, so I haven't, I've only seen them really play at Premier League, to be honest. But yeah, it's probably the the strongest squad. Like we, we were able to make some substitutions. We were able to bring off our front three and bring on Jordan Henderson, who's club captain, uh, Baby Shaq and Shakiri, who was able to come on, and Daniel Sturridge, who scored within twenty eight seconds and yeah. Stanton to come on. Um, so yeah, it is. I get, I get what you're saying. It is positive. I don't wanna. I don't wanna fall for them just yet. See and fall into the trap of we're thinking we're gonna win the league because we finished twenty five point points. Behind Man City last year, which yeah. is humongous. Yeah, I know what you mean. Everyone is saying that you know about Liverpool. They they they're nearly afraid to sort of say that they're title containers, but they are. If you you know everything's in the right place. Klopp's been there for three years now. Um, mm -hmm. they've had two European finals within that time. The League Cup final. Yeah, um, they've. Klopp has built his squad, like he's built his team, the players he wants there. He's got, which he didn't have before, is that solid base with Allison there and Van Dijk who he's brought in. Um, and now he's short up the midfield with Henderson, Keita, Wijnaldum. I mean, Fabinho. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good sort of core. And then you have that, everyone knows about the front three in, in front of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, we need to be talking about Liverpool as title contenders, like we. Oh lord! I know it, it probably scares um, Liverpool fans because they don't want to get sucked into that again, especially with what happened with with that team with Suarez and Gerrard in it. And mm -hmm. um, but everything's in place now, I think, and it's just it's just get, getting past Man City. <coughs> like that's that's your only issue. Like. I think, it's, and we'll talk about Man City very quickly. But I think as a Liverpool fan, coming off of what happened in May, there. Still not over it, um, as you can see that's on the wall now because I'll never wear it again. Um, and then to come into the season, like 
with a lot, a lot more hope and sort of expectation and really buzzing about, like we are all as Liverpool fans buzzing about this season and what, what possibly could happen. That's not me personally saying we want to win the league. I still think Man City will win the league. Um, I think they're a very, very special football team. Um, and to talk about Man City, like yesterday they <clears throat> quite comfortably beat Arsenal, you could say at the Emirates. Yeah. Uh, they were able to take off their front three, which was started was Sterling, Aguero, and Riyad Mahrez, who was their summer signing, and they were able to bring on Leroy Sané, Kevin De Bruyne, and Gabriel Jesus. <laughs> so, you know they they have, they have, they have the, I think they have the best squad on paper, from one to say twenty four. They were not don't count the numbers because squad and all that, but in players twenty four players whatever it is twenty three players that we've ever seen in a Premier League era. I don't think there's been a squad that's got close to it. And they might win, they might win the league. Something could happen or they might win the Champions League. But I think on paper this Man City squad is absolutely just uh, superb. The thing with the, the with the points gap from last year, I think that paints a bit of a bit of a confusing picture because man like I don't think man teams figure out how to play against Man City. Liverpool did it last season. The, there be there be teams this season try to copy that like mm-hmm. hands down that yeah. if they have the ability to do it they will try and copy what Liverpool did last season just go at them like. um so I don't think Man City are gonna be as record break they're not gonna break those records I don't think again and the other thing is I think Man City are gonna take their eye off the Premier League slightly and go after the Champions League perhaps there for the Champions League he's there for the Champions League and that that's why they brought him in. City had won the league before Pat came. That that's not what they crave now. Yes, they can break records and they can win Premier Leagues. And you look back on it, and they probably want to dominate this era, this period. That's what they want. But really, and I know it because that's what happened with Chelsea. Roman Abramovich wanted the Champions League. He wanted to be Chelsea to be kings of Europe. Like, and these owners coming in, that's what they want. Like with their money, they want that success in the Champions League. It took him 13 years to win it as well, in mm-hmm. 2012. I, I know what you mean, I, I think Man City, like, they're a big push. I don't know if they might, they'll never admit it, but I think they'll, their Champions League will definitely be the one they'll aim for the most. Where that allows Liverpool, Manchester United, Chelsea, Spurs, possibly Arsenal. It's only Emery's first real competitive, it's only his first competitive game, so, and they're playing mm-hmm. against Man City. Where that allows the teams like that to sneak in and claw back the points deficit, I'm not so sure. As I said, the Manchester squad is just frightening. I still think on their day, Liverpool can beat any team, not Real Madrid obviously, um, in Europe. I think, and I think if we meet Man City in Europe again, we can beat them again, that's no problem. Can we beat them once in the league? I don't think we'll beat them twice. And I think we'll get closer, but I still would go with Man City win the league this year. I think we'll come second, Liverpool, as Liverpool fan, Liverpool will come second. But it's only one game in, so... Your, your issues, obviously, as as Liverpool last season, are your draws at home <coughs> to those clubs, like West, like West Ham. Yeah, well, Brighton. yeah, um, like well, I don't think we beat Brighton, but the ilk of those teams that yeah. the teams that are maybe from tenth downwards that Liverpool will like sound cocky or arrogant here should, should be, be, of course, they should be, yeah. but weren't, and that was a good start then on Sunday. Yesterday, the, the West Ham had made so many new additions, yeah. put them away, um, four 0 That's the West Ham. Were they, poor. They, they, they look poor. They look like a team that didn't know each other. Exactly. I, I said that to you. Like uh, they've made nearly too many signings, which they probably did last year as well. And they maybe thought that with Pellegrini coming in, we'll just touch on West Ham, but yeah, yeah. with Pellegrini coming in, that he would galvanise new players, and he's he's a Premier League winner, mm-hmm. he's experienced in the league tell those players how to play it, but I just think they came up against maybe the toughest assignment of the weekend. Like. If you look at uh, Max today too, the, the, um, a brilliant clip on West Ham where the, mm-hmm. I think it was Jermaine Genius highlighted how Mark Noble was constantly getting isolated mm-hmm. and you could almost see, come feel the fear from Mark Noble coming out of the screen, the fact that he was being left alone with like 30, 40 yards of space around him. And it was Naby Keita was getting on the ball, or Firmino was dropping deep, or James Miller had an absolutely outstanding game yesterday. Um, Gino Manaldo, I mean, these midfield players that were coming in and able to run past him and bypass him, he was just getting messy. And that's what I was sort of thinking. Yeah, this West Ham team looks like they haven't gelled just yet, and they won't gel just yet. You know, no. it's only the first game of the season. 
I think <coughs> West Ham will be all right. Oh yeah, I think they'll be all right. Like, the, 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 the too much quality to to be relegated. Like, Fabian Anderson looked, looked promising. He was their the only things, sort yeah. of ray of light um, on on Sunday. Sunday. Um, he looked really good. Like, and, uh, linking up down that left hand yeah. side with pace, and you know, he was up against some uh, Trent who had such a good season last yeah. season, and there was a times he was playing one twos in round. Um, but he looks like he might move on maybe even next season because he looks like a top top player, like a Philippe top Anderson. six player. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't get to create any chances, like or any goal scoring chances, but he, from what he did at Lazio and, and the type of player he is, he he looks like possibly West Ham is a step for him. And any West Ham fans, I don't mean to be rude there, like, but you know that's possibly what will happen there. Um, I need to talk about your own team. Yeah, like I don't think just from the question you asked me first about um, the players uh, that sort of I noticed that maybe have a good yep. season um, was in an awful game, I must say, on Friday night, James Madison. Yeah, he looks a very City. good footballer, doesn't he? Just when you said stepping stone there, and again, no offence to lesser fans, but it seems as if that might be a stepping stone, which I think is a good thing. He could have maybe went straight from Norwich to a, a top six club. Yeah. But he might not have started. He might not have got the game time. But Leicester, he'd get the game time in the Premier League. He's in the right league to build it up. And then he'll maybe make a bigger move maybe next season. Um, but he looks he looks like he's, he's a midfielder who can get in between the lines and thread. The, the worst thing about it was, and it was less than the radio earlier on, was that he came off when Vardy came on. Yeah, you didn't get to see how those two would link. Yeah, yeah. Um, which was a wee bit disappointing but I'm sure we'll see it you know in the coming weeks like again it's only the first game yeah. so when you can't read really into it because like not to go back to yourself but Felipe Scolari won his first game as Chelsea's 4-0 away to Portsmouth I can't remember but and yeah. I think it was Portsmouth and then it all went a bit sour there so you can't really don't read too we would never read too much into the first game of the season like Patricia Matthew is a Leeds fan he thinks they're probably going to win the Champions League now in about 2 or 3 years because they've got the Iceland and they're flying but you can just not, yeah, you're right, not really into it. But it's still like, it's, it's still, as a, when your team wins first game of the season. Yeah, all right, yeah. Just to touch on Manchester United, because we know there'll be a lot of Manchester United uh, fans watching or watching when they watch back on YouTube later on. They've had a really um, weird summer. Like it, so it just seems like their manager's trying to cause utter turmoil and... All I can see out of it, say as a, as a non minor from Washington, I can just get a greater appreciation for Paul Pogba. I love Paul Pogba, I'm a big fan of Paul Pogba, and I thought he was brilliant at times in the World Cup. At times he wasn't, that's fair enough. And I'm a big fan of his, and he just comes out, and I thought he was very good actually in a, an underwhelming performance, both teams really, mm. on Friday. I thought he was one of the, he was the standout footballer, and him and James Madison on the pitch, I thought he was brilliant. Like. Definitely, and um, as you say, he's. I thought he would have a good World Cup in our one of our World Cup previews. Yeah. I thought he'd be the player of the tournament. You picked France to win it. Yeah, um, yeah, I'll just take that credit. Right <laughs> um, but I think uh, I I think he's still he, he's nearly as if they're trying to keep him under wraps. Like, and for what reason? Like, um, well, I hope he they do keep him under wraps. Until yeah, I know, but I mean, if I was the United fan, yeah, I'd be so yeah, frustrated. Yeah. But um, I think he's he's world world class player. Um, and they should be completely basing their whole team around them. Everything they do should be around Paul Pogba. Um, and it's nearly as if Mourinho doesn't want to admit that or doesn't want that to happen. Um, because some of the comments he's made, and, and some of the comments now that Pogba's made, I'd be worried if I was a United fan, because as we now know, the La Liga um, transfer window is still open. Another week or 10 days or something. Yeah, there, right? and... I think it's the president of Barcelona maybe came out and said, you know, there's still time for business to be done. And I would be sweating right now, like, if I was a United fan. If they come anywhere near <laughs> Mo Salah and declaring war on Catalonia, live, they better not come anywhere near most of No chance. But, yeah. that. but yeah, I know, I, I, I take it to me. And Paul, like, Messi and Ronaldo are sort of, well, I'm going to say Ronaldo's coming to the end of his career and he's probably going to challenge this year. But they're coming to the end of I mean, yeah. and, the, and we're looking as fans for the next big star and Neymar threatening it and Pogba threatening it. I think Pogba's the one that could un explode and could win a couple of Ballon d'Ors. He has that in him. Yeah, of course he does. 
is that if it's going to be United, I think it's going to be United with a different manager. And I think Manchester United, if this keeps going, and if they start, to, if they stutter through this season and it comes to, say, January, Christmas time or whatever, and he's stuttered and say they're lying, Doc takes sixth or seventh, then I think United need to bite the bullet, pay him off, get rid of him, see, see if they can catch up whatever's going on in the season, but keep Paul Pogba and build a team, as you said, build a team around him. And like Lukaku as well, <coughs> feeds off him. And Lukaku is another one who had a very decent World Cup. Away from Jose Mourinho. Yeah. And he still scored a lot of goals last year. Yeah, it's just you feel like he could even score more. Yeah. Like that he's not even play. He was good last season, he was a very good season, but can Lukaku be better? Yes, sir. It feels at times, like it's weird, it feels at times that us as non Man United fans are talking up some of their players more than Manchester United fans are. I would know a few Manchester United fans that would sell Paul Pogba in the morning because they're not happy with how he's been getting on or how he's, they think he's treated the club. I don't think he's treated Manchester United badly this time. I think the time he left previously, I don't know what happened there when he left when he was younger. But it's, it is strange, like even Lukaku gets a bit of grief. Yeah. I think he's a brilliant footballer. Right? But yeah, I mean, a year ago now, we were starting to say, you know, who's going to be the best end, Murata or Lukaku? Without a doubt, it's been Lukaku. Yeah. And, and I would have said Murata. Well, Lukaku, this season, I had really, and even the World Cup, I've, Lukaku has grown on me. Yeah, Morata didn't make a World Cup. So. No, that's true. Yeah. And Spain were poor. So that sort of tells you that, you know, Lukaku's been a brilliant signing. And mm -hmm. it's nearly as if the United fans don't want to talk them up because Mourinho's not doing it himself. And they want to be on the same level as a the manager. They want to be, of course you do, as a, as a fan, you want to be, you don't want to be saying opposite things to what your manager's saying. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, it's, it's, it's a Mourinho third season. Um, it seemed to follow him everywhere. Crisis uh, impending, but uh, I hope I hope it doesn't happen. Like we want to see, well, I want to see all the teams play it to their full potential. Like all the best teams in the league, but um, there's, there's so much better things that could be happening at United, I think. Yeah, it's a strange time for United fans. Yeah. Um, we've talked about Man the two teams in Manchester, we've talked obviously about Liverpool, but there's three teams in London that are in that top six, and we're not always going to focus on the top six, by the way, everyone, because we know that a lot of people support other teams, like Palace had a brilliant win at the weekend, and Aaron, I want to get this right, Juan Bissaka, wow, he looks like an absolute dream of a fullback. Mm -hmm. You know, just to touch on him, and we will touch on your blow with Chelsea very soon, he's had eight, eight senior games now, right? as a professional footballer, it's eight, eight senior games, so eight league games for Crystal Palace. Mm -hmm. And he's marked Hazard, Ericsson and Sanchez. They've never they didn't score. And then obviously the new up and coming future of English football, one of them anyway, Ryan Sessignon, completely bamboozled him. And had an he had a, they were talking about Saha, how good he is mm -hmm. for um Palace, but Juan Masaka looks like an absolute dream boat. He looks like a fine, doesn't he? Oh, brilliant. <clears throat> he really he looks like another one that Palace can be swept on yeah. from transfer windows like I mean they've done well to keep Zaha. I don't know how he's still a Crystal Palace player. Um but fair play to them. Like. Yeah. And again, he shows his worth scores again on the opening day of the Premier League season. Um so yeah, hopefully I mean I like Palace club. Like. Yeah, I like their their fans seem to be good crack. I wouldn't mind going to that as an away game. Yeah. It seems like a good away. Yeah. Um so yes, the three bigger peak London clubs don't want to try and offend anyone tonight. Don't right? it, sorry. But we will offend it, offend people soon, don't worry. Um, they had mixed bags. Um, yeah. two one the uh, uh, Tottenham uh, away to Newcastle. Lucky. Yeah, you would say that because At Newcastle was in the lucky. second half hit the crossbar. Tight. Spurs were good in the first half. Yeah. Um, and Ali showed again that he's an absolute wonderful header of the ball. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I know that. <laughs> Uh, Harry Kane hasn't scored in August yet, <laughs> uh, I, I, he might do that, I don't know, it seems like a weird thing, it's almost like he's buzzing off it now himself, yeah. um, and then obviously, like uh, I think it was Rondon, cracks the crossbar, uh, close to finish, and before that Mo Dami, and smacked the side of the post as well, so yeah. Newcastle have played quite well, for having such a horrible pre-season again, Rafa and nothing but turmoil, but Spurs won, Chelsea had a quite convincing win in the end, yeah, well, well they're getting out of Third gear, really, like? Yeah, I mean, it's not really uh, an acid test, you know, as you know, as well as Huddersfield have done, to say, in the league. Um, the real start will be Arsenal next week, um, for probably both teams, um, because Arsenal had 
the horrible assignment of a new manager and facing Man City straight away. Um, but Chelsea, yeah, happy enough. Um, sorry to say it himself, it's going to take some time, which in a way I am anyway willing to, to sort of let that happen, let it um, run its course. Um, he, he has clearly uh, let back a yoga go because he doesn't see him fitting in with his style of play. Which is fair enough, I, I feel sorry for Bakayoko because he didn't really get a run with Conte and he's been <coughs> chipped out the door um, from the word go. Um, he's not much sorry with regime. Jorginho, Conte and Kovacic. So. He's not. Um, and I think that was, that was a really good piece of business bringing in Kovacic, even though it's on loan and there's not an option to buy. But Kovacic, when he was saying his sort of social media goodbyes to Real Madrid, it seemed like he's not coming back anyway. Um, so unless you know, unless he forces his way out at, at the end of next season, whether it be to Chelsea if he has a good season, or whether it be to somebody else, but it doesn't look like he's going to go back around Madrid. He sort of cut his ties there. Um, but yeah, we haven't seen him yet. We haven't seen what the a starting hazard is going to be like under Sorry. Um, worryingly enough, that's what Conte said about um, Hazard. Uh, last season that he's, he kept saying that he's not fit to play 90 minutes and he took him off you know at 60 70 minutes in a lot of the games last season um, and he has come back with a bit of a dad belly uh, that like yellow it, top does not do him any favours yeah but I mean it didn't seem to hazard him at all um, <laughs> nice. unintended yeah. um, but fully intended uh, I mean he was brilliant when he came on yeah, <laughs> the Huddersfield yeah. worked hard but I mean Hazard made the most of it um, and you know Barkley looked good. Um, I don't think he's gonna start, but again, it's it's a squad game. Chelsea have the Arbol Europa League this season, um, so players like that are gonna have to be used. Um, but I liked, really liked the look of Jorginho and Kante. That's the only, you know, sort of focus that there was. That is the big difference. Um, yes, Alonso playing a proper left back role now. I don't think it suits him as much. Yeah. He didn't have a bad game. He didn't have a bad game, but he's he's a player who likes to bomb. I mean, he's not he's not defend. It's, you know, you know, you want your your fullbacks to be properly defensive minded first, first, yeah, and then like Aspilicueta, yeah, yeah. Aspilicueta on the other side is can play that wingback. He's an absolute dream, isn't he? To have yeah. in the game like he's a dream, and he loves the club now. He's um, like uh, I would put James Milner in that ilk. Yeah, like you just know he's going to give you a job. He does a job for you wherever yeah. you put him. Man. He does a job. Um. As well, I'd play all over the park. Like. Um, Wouldn't put him in next, like. <clears throat> bit tiny. Well, and no. speaking of being speak, being a small man himself. And we've got Kaba. Yes, he's got, he's a, got Kaba. An, an equally confusing name. So we yeah. both bought good-looking goalkeepers, which is nice. Yeah, and Kaba looks like he, you know, he is. So, I mean, saw bits and pieces of uh, him before, but um, he looked good. Like it's obviously not the biggest test he's going to face, and as as we. Spoke about before, goalkeepers are going to make errors. Mm-hmm. Look at David Hay in the World Cup. He's mm-hmm. still, in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the world. The best I've ever seen. But <laughs> you know, goalkeepers will make some mistakes. Yeah, hundred percent. I know what's coming with Allison. Allison's going to make a mistake. I need a couple of kickouts. Not to go back to Liverpool, but a couple of kickouts that were two that were a wee bit like, what's going on there? And that's going to happen. Yeah. You, you cannot not make a mistake as a goalkeeper. It's just impossible. Unless you're a robot, it's, just, it's going to happen. And unfortunately, as a goalkeeper, when you make a mistake, it can be critical. Like, a good friend, our good friend, Lawrence Carey, has found out. Yeah. And just to touch on him, I'm, I was, I'm glad they would have kept him and they're looking after him. I'm also, it was brilliant to see him when he came on in the friendly against Torino. He got a stand ovation yeah. at the crowd at Anfield because he has had an absolutely horrific summer. Yeah. You don't want on social to... media now, and any balloons if you're watching this that have been doing that there on social media, uh, just do one to be honest because I was having enough of it. But yes, Chelsea just look, they looked alright after what happened against Man City, or they just sort of looked like looking in days a wee bit. They looked like they, they couldn't get themselves motivated for that game. It was a community shield. Yeah, they'll have sorry, will be quite happy with the fact that he hasn't had to change too much yet. They haven't sorry, the ball hasn't arrived yet. Whether it arrives at Chelsea, it might be a different concept altogether. And you just get a comfortable win away from home. Jorginho having a really good game and integrating himself into the Premier League. So, yeah, you can be. Yeah, Jorginho is the one I think who is going to be. He's going to be sorry as main. main ah, that's he's going to be his commander. He's in there. Commander, yeah. he, he, you know, already he's shouting 
um, instructions to everyone. To even David Louise, you saw him a couple of times about playing the ball in quick in his feet. He looked much more assertive. Yeah. David Louise. Yeah. He. I, I think he's he's probably bought in to um, sorry ball whatever this yeah. is or or sorry as as the manager. Um, I mean he's come out with some really good quotes about him already that um, he's fully behind him. Um, but Jorginho looks like he's going to be the, the main man and Kante, I mean as well a dream like as you said about Aspilicueta, Kante is going to be down his side as well and he's going to be pushing on a wee bit and scoring like he, he did if he adds goals to this game I mean that's just that's, a pure bonus. That's the game done. Because he can go up there and he can get back as quick as he's uh, as he's gone up. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so yeah, it looks positive, but I mean, I'm not getting carried away. Chelsea squad isn't close to Liverpool's or Man City's, um, so I would be very happy with the top four and maybe an FA Cup or a Europa you know, League if you push on that far. Um, but yeah, it looks okay. Um, the test will be Arsenal next week. What do you make of Spurs this summer? Um, if I was a fan, I would be frustrated a bit, like. Yes, they didn't lose anyone, which is a big plus when you think of the players. Yeah, they lost no one. Yeah. When you think of the yeah. players that they have who have been linked with all those other clubs, mm-hmm. Keane obviously is linked with every single big European club. Ericsson's been linked today with yeah. Barcelona. Um, and it's still going to happen. Dali Ali obviously as well. Um, but as, as we talk about off camera, Lucas, same. Nice more, yeah. And people maybe forget about that. Uh, he signed in January last mm-hmm. year, so he is kind of like a new signing, and yeah, he, was, he was quite good on on uh, Saturday. Um, so he the, the have made that addition to their squad, and he didn't. He maybe looked a wee bit unfit actually, um, towards the end of last season. So with him fully fully unfit and added into that squad, I still don't think the thing that would frustrate me is that Spurs haven't bolstered their bench. Uh, or their, you know, the 23 man mm-hmm. squad. Um, because, again, if it happens that Kane get, gets injured, they, they don't have a, a viable option there who's going to replace them. They have their end day, but it, it hasn't seemed to be working for And it hasn't worked so far, unless, you know, Pochettino's seen something in the summer that he thinks he could work something out. Um, he would need to be playing, though. <laughs> exactly. Um that's why I think if they've kind of identified, I don't know who, I mean, like, it's very difficult to, to pick out a player yeah. who's going to be happy to sit on the bench and be Carrie Kane's understudy. That's, that's actually what Harry Redknapp, funny enough, said mm. um, on Five Live the other day, or was it News Talk? It was one of their radio stations anyway. And he said, <coughs> and he says, like, it, it's, it's really difficult if, like, Potts has to go to someone and say, listen, I want to buy you, I want you to come and play for us. Yeah, yeah, boss, where we're playing. Mm, you're gonna be something on the bench, really, to be honest, because is you're not gonna replace Ericsson, you're not gonna replace Deli Ali, you're not gonna replace Harry Kane, mm. Son, like you know he's brilliant too. Yeah. Now you got Lucas Moura. Nobody's gonna get into that defense. I think Spurs on paper have the def- the best defense in the Premier League, and they're not gonna need a new goalkeeper. So it is it is a really difficult one for Spurs. I mean, you look at it that way. I have a bit of sympathy for Pochettino because. Yeah. We were lucky we got Shakiri, and maybe us one Spurs could look at that, but they have players similar to that. Possibly, no, probably looked at the squad and thought, like, he, still, he certainly would have looked at a starting 11 and gone, there's nobody I can buy who, obviously, without the exceptions of you know the world's best players, who realistically, who's going to come, yeah. who's good enough, but will sit on the bench. Yeah. You don't want to sign anybody, like, no offense, but like Laurenti. Who is happy to sit on the bench, but hasn't done hasn't done it yet anyway. Um, Plus, they, they don't pay the big wages. Yeah. So he's sort of caught out there, punching mm-hmm. on his knees. So what he's done, Spurs has actually been brilliant. Yeah. And I think they'll challenge for top four. Certainly. We're yeah. not going to do our, our full predictions just yet. We want Jake to come back in and and give us his as well because we're all leave it up with and let him be involved. Like obviously, um, and it would be it would have been nice actually here. <laughs> And once he's calmed himself, what he thought of Arsenal's performance because he wasn't too happy yesterday, sure he wasn't. No. No. Um, a, a really worrying stat as well for Aaron Ramsey was it was the the he only completed eleven passes, which is fifteen fewer than the least he's ever done in a game. 
mm. which is really really worrying that really is. worrying um, that just I don't know what Emery sort of was thinking about or what he sort of was the same didn't start Torreira I think um, what do you call him the Gunduzi. Gunduzi was good yeah I'm not a big fan of Jack anyway, and we'll listen. We'll let Jake talk more about Arsenal because things only fair. But Torreira would have started instead of, instead of Jack. I would hoof him in to see if Yeah. And yeah, they just I I'd be annoyed at Aubameyang and the forward players, but there wasn't anything coming from that because I don't think they put Man City under enough pressure. <coughs> no. I think it was too easy at times for Man City. Now don't get me wrong, Man City can make it look very easy. I like in the second in the second leg. At the city, Eddie Hart Stadium last year, in the first half against Liverpool, it was absolutely frightening. Yeah, what they were doing. Yeah, but I, I don't even think Man City were, which is the worrying thing for Arsenal, they were near that. They were in third gear, I think, at times. Yeah, they, they didn't get out of it, mm. and they didn't have on, you know, De Bruyne and Sane or uh, David Silva. Yeah, he uh, wasn't in the squad. No, I think he's injured. So retired from the national duty today as well. Yeah, a lot of Spaniards starting Yeah, a lot of the other ones, yeah. Um, but that that would be the worrying thing for Arsenal, is that, that they were beat by Man City comfortably, who didn't even get near the levels of Man City last season. And the thing is about Man City is that they, they didn't even need to get out of third gear. They, they were relaxed. They were nearly sat, sat off and said, right, look, let's... Um, which is, I don't think Pat would have been overly happy about. Um, no, don't think he was chuffed. I think he was yeah. a bit annoyed that they set off at the time and didn't didn't put a number on Arsenal. Yeah, especially um, first half. I mean, first half they were they were good and they sort of did what they had to do, but they missed chances too. Aguero missed a, a, a glorious one on one. Yeah, which he really would have been fancy in the put away. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent save by Jack, but yeah. he should have scored. Jack tried to score one himself as well. Yeah. Which was mad. And I, I actually like that Arsenal have tried this player from the back and they've gone for it and everyone's bought into it. Because that will, there'll be a bit of teething problems, but that'll click. Yeah. And when that clicks, it'll be slick. And Yeah, it, you would hope so. But the other thing is that, as you know, a, a goalkeeper situation can carry on. And the, I think Amory needs to, if he's going to stick with Czech, he needs to maybe, maybe not yet, but he needs to at some point in the next couple of weeks say who his number one goalkeeper is going to be. Because the, it's one of those things that I think is really important yeah. is that you, your fans, your squad, your team, your starting eleven, the keeper himself knows who his number one is. Um, so we know all about it. Yeah, I think they, they they need to do that. Um, maybe the sign Leno to be to be checks on a study for a season. Um, possibly. Yeah, I don't think Jack. He made some good saves, but I don't think he covered himself in glory. I would go with Leno. Yeah. Um. We're going to be wrapping up things now, obviously. This is their first show back and it's under a new name at Gameplay on Grass. It's going to sort of take every week. We're going to do it now, as you know, on a Monday night at 8 o'clock. Um, we'll review, obviously, what's happened at the weekend. Um, and we're going to have some some features coming up, including the manager will feature, where we'll pick a, a manager during the weekend that you all know on our social media platforms. And then the three of us will discuss. We'll delve into the style and the history. and Yeah, and how he likes to do things. Looking maybe, forward to that, actually. Yeah, potentially what could happen. The first one I think we're going to go for is maybe Unai Emery. Because, um, obviously, a principio, a little prince, likes to talk about his new mate. Um, but we also another thing we're doing, and, and if you didn't join up, then... Unfortunately, you can't turn up anyone. The league's closed, but we run the fancy football uh, league this year. And um, we're at Christmas. The league leader is going to get a football top of their choice, and then the winner uh, in May is going to get a hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, which I'm free to enter, so I think we're being quite generous. Yeah. And um, for three la four lads, sorry, print, uh, producer, Mike, <laughs> four lads that produce a YouTube, uh, Facebook show off their own back in one of our houses. But yeah, we've done a fancy football league, and I'm absolutely devastated to say that Andrew Renshaw is leading it yeah. with 97 points. <laughs> this can't happen. He cannot win it, folks. So if you're in our fancy football league, get your heads together. And start winning it, please. He, he stuck in uh, Wama Saga, didn't he? He did stick in Wama Saga, of course oh, he did. Oh, he knew that. Like he, he, didn't know, he didn't even know why he stuck him in, because his name, he just laughed at his name probably. And went, well, Basaka, Wama Saga, stick. That's all he did. He hasn't a clue. There's not a mission he knows how to get 97 points <laughs> in fancy football in the first week. No chance. So please, everyone begging you, as one of Andrew's best mates, please beat him in the fancy football. Um, yeah, next week, obviously... We're probably going to look at 
Oh, it's only against Chelsea. Yeah, I'll be sitting back in the middle because these two will go at it. Um, just, I'm going to be cheeky here. What's your opinions on next week? And how much do you think um, Chelsea will beat Arsenal there? <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my absolutely honest view is that it's too early for both teams to know. Um, Three now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chelsea are home, which is maybe the only... Um, it's been a good hunting ground, like. Yeah. Chelsea historically have been very good against Arsenal at home, at yeah. home um, but haven't beaten them in the last six meetings. Um, so that's a rare fact in the, in the Premier League era. Um, but again, Arsenal, new look Arsenal, new look Chelsea, goodness knows what could happen. Um, hopefully Hazard starts because um, he likes to torture Arsenal. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I think Arsenal's defence still looks like the Arsenal defence of last season. Bellerin was disappointing, mm. the way he left Hazard goes past him. Mm. Um, I hope Arsenal play Torreira, I'm a big fan of Torreira, I know Jake yeah. is as well. Um, I, I, that could be a really good game on Saturday night. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Liverpool are playing um, on Monday night, so that'll be all my work doing the live show. So uh, I will try and keep, obviously, professional as I'm doing it in the show. But yeah, um, I just run through last week's last weekend's fixtures for those that don't know. Actually, I meant to run over these results before the start of the show. As we talked about, uh, our own teams won Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United won 2 1, as we said, against Leicester. The best game for me in the weekend, though, and we're going to wrap it up very, very soon, was Wolves against Everton. Mm. An absolute cracking game. And I was buzzing to see what Wolves were like. And <coughs> even though I'm a red, I wanted to see how Everton got on. Yeah. And McCarlson, 50 million, gets you two goals in the first game. And a second <coughs> goal was very, very Terry on Ray esque. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant finish. Really good signing. Really good signing. Um, Southampton and Burnley was only 0 0 the weekend. Yeah. Should have been a penalty possibly for Danny Ings in that one. Watford had a good win against Brighton, which I know it's only the first game of the season, but that was like a six pointer. Yeah. And Pereira would score cropped up with two goals. Um Bournemouth uh, beat Cardiff 2 0 at home. I think Cardiff are going to be in for a tough one this year. It looks like they're maybe gonna struggle. Um, yeah. The other important point I'll make, uh, just quickly about Man City is that their next five fixtures look on paper like they're going to be five wins. Uh, they don't play as top six, nearly a top ten. I don't team think they play a top ten. Until Liverpool. Yeah. Um, that was nice to the Premier League there to give them an easy run. Yeah. Uh, Which is the middle of October, I think. So Man City for the next five or six weeks have, on paper, all very winnable games. Which is scary. They could develop a lead. Yes. Um, that could be potentially uh, quite dangerous. Uh, also as well, Real Oviedo will be back very soon. I'm sure you can see it in the top corner there. Um, and of course, producer Matthew's leads are absolutely flying under the glorious and brilliant Marco Bielsa. I know he's very happy with that. Uh, everyone, thanks for watching. If you watched us live on Facebook tonight, thank you very much. If you're watching this later on our YouTube page, again, thanks for everything. Um, again, play on grass, and you can see the hashtag. Make sure you tell all your mates, because the more people that watch it, the more we enjoy it, and the better it is for us to grow as a company and hopefully get so big we own our own media tycoon someday and we're the better football team which would be class but yes thanks everyone for watching thank you very much Breton thank you for our show this season we'll see you on again next week on Monday 8 o'clock on our Facebook see ya